Lent is a great time of grace, conversion, and freedom. This Lent, what I think God is calling all of us to focus on is freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from addiction. Jesus went out into the desert for 40 days and for 40 nights and he did prayer and fasting. The Israelites were in the desert, why? Because they were escaping slavery from the Egyptians. Many of us are enslaved and we don't realize it. We've been spoiled with comfort. We have instant access to entertainment, hot showers, climate controls. We have so many luxuries that in of themselves are not bad, but they make us soft. So many of us are enslaved to food. We're addicted to sugar. We're addicted to processed foods. And that affects the way we think. It also is bad for our bodies. Some of us are damaging our health because of our addictions to food. Many of us are addicted to social media and to being on our cell phones. We're enslaved that when we're with our families, we're looking at our mobile devices instead of being present to the ones that we love. Some of us are enslaved to the television. We stay up late at night because we're addicted to what we're watching on television. So this Lent, let's focus on freedom, freedom from slavery. But you know what? To be free from slavery is going to require a radical choice. We have the traditional prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. These, in a way, line up with the sources of temptation that we hear from the Bible. Of what? Temptations from the devil, temptations from the world, temptations from the flesh. We need to be free. We need to say no to the flesh. We need to say no to the world. We need to say no to the devil. Why? So we can be free to hear the voice of God. So we can be free to say yes to God, to what God's will and God's plan is for our lives. Pharaoh was threatened by the Israelites because they were strong, because they were growing in number. So too Satan, the world, is frightened by Catholics who authentically live their faith, live for Jesus Christ, hear the voice of God. So we must be free to do these things. So I recommend this Lent, you take up all three categories, prayer, fasting slash mortification to fight the flesh, and detachment from the world, and almsgiving. I'm going to give you some advice on what you can do for these various categories. So for prayer, we need an intense, deep prayer life. We should not try to fit prayer in. Instead, prayer should be the source, the center of our life, and everything else should revolve around it. This Lent, I challenge you to pray for at least one hour. Now, maybe you can't make an hour straight, but you can do 20 minutes in the morning, you can do 20 minutes in the afternoon, you can do 20 minutes in the evening. But if possible, try and make an hour straight. If possible, try to go to the church. And there you can do your rosary. There you can do your spiritual reading. There you can listen in silence to the God who speaks in silence. There in prayer is where you're gonna get the strength and the resolution to do these other acts of penance. I recommend that you pray about what it is that God's calling you to do this Lent. Deep in our hearts, we know that God is calling us to a change. The second category, fasting and mortification. Before we get into the fasting aspect, what kinds of mortification can we do? Things that don't necessarily damage our body, but that are uncomfortable. So for example, many of us go into the shower when we get out of bed, we're asleep, we get into the shower and we go back to sleep because it's so comfortable with the hot water. Perhaps this Lent, you turn the water from hot to room temperature so that you're uncomfortable. You get in, you get out, you don't waste time. You tell yourself from the very beginning of your day that I am gonna live a life of sacrifice today, I'm gonna deny myself. Maybe you have difficulty waking up in the morning. The moment that alarm rings, get yourself out of bed. Sit up immediately, get the blood flowing. These are great acts of mortification and many of the battles that we face throughout the day begin in the morning. We hear from the Gospels that Jesus says that some devils can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. We've heard from Pope Paul VI 
that the smoke of Satan has entered into the church. So it would be very powerful and Lent is a very powerful time because now the church gets together for prayer and fasting. To make your fasting spiritual, you could take your normal fad diet. You could take the diet of intermittent fasting or having a paleolithic diet or a ketogenic diet, maybe not eating any desserts, not eating any sugars, not eating any processed foods, getting rid of breads and pastas. You can simply say, Jesus, I offered this as a sacrifice. I offered this in union with your sacrifice on the cross. I offered this in union with the times that you were in the desert and you didn't eat the things that you wanted to eat. That's how simple it is to make it spiritual. And by saying no to the appetites of the flesh, saying no to the foods that we want to eat, gives us more strength in saying no to temptations of the flesh. The last category, detachment from the world, can be the most difficult for many people. This also involves almsgiving. Maybe you are too attached to your money and you're gonna give alms. Well, when it comes to giving alms, it should hurt a little bit. It should make us uncomfortable. Many of us are enslaved to our mobile devices, to social media. We get a dopamine hit when we go on to, for example, Facebook and we check how many likes, how many people have commented on our posts. And that can become very addicting. So maybe for Lent, you could give up going on social media. You can give up looking at your phone for entertainment, looking at the internet for entertainment. Other forms of detachment from the world could be no television, no news. Anytime you turn on the television, they're seeking your ratings, they're seeking your money, they're seeking your eyes because that brings in ad dollars. So maybe this Lent you'll get rid of the television. Again, all of these activities, all of these penances, all of this freedom should free us up to do the will of God. And the God's will for us is living our primary vocations. So many of you who watch are fathers and mothers. So all of this is giving you freedom to be a better father, to be a better mother, to be a better student, to be a better son and daughter. You're gonna notice that your mind becomes clear. You begin to have freedom from your addictions to food, freedom from all of the junk that we put in when we're looking at social media. And you're gonna find that this Lent is truly transformational. Now I'm going to give you tips to how to keep these Lenten resolutions. Number one, whatever you choose to do in these three categories, and I recommend again all three categories, write them down. Studies have shown that when you write down a resolution, when you write down a plan, you're far more likely to keep it. Also, when you write them down, put them in a place that you can see them on a daily basis. Put them at your desk, put them on a dry erase board and put that dry erase board on the wall. So every day you can be reminded, these are my goals. My second piece of advice is find a friend that can help to keep you accountable. Somebody who either on a daily basis or on a regular basis, you can say, hey, how are your Lenten resolutions going? Oh, it's tough, I struggled this morning. All right, you can do this, I am encouraging you. Keep moving forward. Somebody who serves as sort of an anchor for you. In the description section of this video, I will include those three categories with various options that you might wanna consider this Lent. Spend some time in prayer, go before the Blessed Sacrament, ask the Lord, what is it that I need freedom from this Lent? Go into the desert to escape whatever it is that you might be addicted to so that you can be free to do what? So you can be free to hear the voice of God and respond positively. God bless you, God love you, and I hope you have a very fruitful Lent. My family, my friends, I forgot to tell you something. I cannot believe I forgot to leave this out of the video. Yes, one of the things that I'm gonna be giving up for Lent is giving up social media and entertainment on the internet. We use the internet too much. It messes with your brain, for me at least. And so you might be thinking, Gabriel, does that mean you're not gonna be posting during Lent? Of course I'm gonna post during Lent. I've already recorded reflections in front of a live audience and the topic that I recorded them on is so important. The saints relied on these things that I'm gonna be discussing Sundays at seven o'clock. Now I have to be honest, I'm not gonna edit them. We're gonna have to focus on the message. It's Lent, it's, we have to mortify our senses. So don't expect to see fancy camera transitions or camera tricks like the one I just did. Seven o'clock, Sunday. God bless you, God love you. I hope you have a very good Lent. I'm not gonna be giving up coffee. Coffee is very important to me. I think God gave us coffee. But pray for me, I'll pray for you. God bless you.